even if there's like a hundred negative things in whatever situation that and when you're in, if you can find that one positive thing and just put your focus on it and just say, you know what, I'm grateful for this thing right here and just solely focus on that. And you'll just feel so much better. I mean, that's what we all want to feel, right? We all want to feel good about ourselves. We all want to feel happy. So let's do it. Let's focus on the good in our lives instead of focusing on all, on all the negative. And it's still okay to like try and build more good in our lives while you know that's happening. But if we're in a situation where there isn't a whole lot, let's focus on the not a whole lot. Like let's focus on that little bit and start to feel better and more grateful. And I think that's I think that's what gratitude does for us. And I think it's I think honestly, gratitude is probably one of the most underrated mental health tools out there. I mean, by far. Thank you, thank you from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you from my heart, from the bottom of my heart. Stay connected to gratitude. Hit the follow button right now and join thousands of listeners tuning in each week. We're the gratitude seekers. Come join us. Hi, gratitude seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Our guest today is a teen mental health ad- advocate, podcast host, upcoming TEDx speaker, and most importantly, severe social anxiety survivor and overcomer. Gratitude has been a large part of Kyle's mental health journey, and we have him here today to talk a little bit more about social anxiety and also gratitude welcome kyle mitchell to the gratitude podcast hey thank you for having me i'm excited to be on my pleasure so let us know a little bit about you about your story i know it but um, i'm sure that our audience would love to to know more about you as well sure So I pretty much struggled with social anxiety my entire life. Um, It it really hit me right smack in the face when I transferred high schools um, at the beginning of my sophomore year. I went from a really small private school with about 200 students in it, and then I transferred to a very large public school with about 1,600 students in it. And it's the first time I've ever been to a public school. I didn't know anybody there, didn't know much about the, you know, the classes and where they were or anything. So me walking in the doors the first day, it was a very uh, frightening thing for me to say the least. And I know for me personally, I wanted to just go, you know, sit by myself in the corner and just be alone. But, you know, with social anxiety, you know, I feared people would judge me, you know, because I was by myself and I had no friends. So I came up with this plan to walk the halls until my first class started, which backing up a little bit, I got to school every single morning. The bus dropped me off, you know, 40 minutes before my first class even started. So I had 40 minutes to kill. And so that was my plan was, okay, I'm just going to walk the halls for 40 minutes and blend in with everybody. And I thought this would work really well. It's like, I'll just be able to blend in with everybody. No one's going to notice. I'm just walking the halls over and over again. And then Till one day somebody did, you know, I got on the bus to head home from school and somebody called me out and said, why do you walk the halls and circles every single morning? And I remember just feeling my, you know, my heart just dropped down to my stomach. I know we've all had that feeling at least at one point in our lives. And I remember just feeling so humiliated and embarrassed. And, you know, the next day at school, I couldn't walk the halls anymore. So 
I proceeded to just go in the bathroom and to the stall from that day on and just sit there and cry. And I remember just having all these thoughts in my head, like, man, why can't you do this, Kyle? Why can't you make friends? You know, why can't you talk to people? You know, why aren't you normal like everyone else? And, you know, that was, that was like the, the breaking point for me. And that's when I started to reach out for help and uh, talk to my counselor and my parents and just kind of open up. And, you know, I, I didn't really take a whole lot of action as far as like towards my social anxiety at this point in time, but just being able to release that burden of emotions and what I was feeling was so helpful, you know, just to get me through high school. And then in, in college was where I started, you know, doing some of the different uh, challenges and actions to actually help with my social anxiety and get myself to the point where I, I took back control and instead of my social anxiety being in control of my entire life, you know, I was in control. I made decisions based on what I wanted to do, not my social anxiety telling me what I could and couldn't do based on what I was anxious or not anxious to do. Yeah. That's amazing that you were, that you were able to, to make this shift. And I love how, how you put it. And in in our lives as well uh we have different fears with different kinds of anxieties that um tend to want to take control of uh, of us and of how we live our life and um yeah, i think this is such a a wonderful and impactful story and yeah it's something that you've lived uh for us it's just a story but for you it's uh, it's an actual experience of of going through that and being able to uh, get to the other side, which is which is amazing. So um, let us know a little bit what role had uh, gratitude played in in your mental health journey. Yeah. So when I got into college, I started you know doing some things for my social anxiety and. I started doing some baby step uncomfortable challenges. Um, but actually gratitude didn't come in until a little bit later. Uh, I, I got to the point where, you know, I became, I was socially confident, you know, I, what, my social anxiety wasn't in control of my life anymore, but I still felt depressed at times. Um, I, I, mean, I still go through those times as well, but uh, I felt like my mental health still wasn't where I wanted it to be. I still wasn't feeling super great about myself, you know, still had plenty or, and in my opinion, way too many uh, down days, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew, I knew there was something I need to do. And that's when I, I started implementing a morning routine into my life uh, in which saved me so so much and that uh, one of the things that I implemented was gratitude in there and that's uh, something that I've always kept in there and I've never taken out um, when I started the morning routine you know I started with just meditation I did that for a couple of weeks and I started adding on I think I think gratitude uh, list was the next one and so I started <clears throat> writing down five things I was grateful for every single morning and I, I did this to try to develop um, what they call an attitude of gratitude, because I found myself, I would focus a lot on the one negative thing in my life or the one like super challenge in my life instead of like the 20 great things that were happening in my life. And so when I started doing these, uh, this gratitude journaling, just writing down these five things I was grateful for in the past 24 hours, it helped me start to train my brain to not only start my day thinking of what I was grateful for and focusing on the positive in my life and all that, but just anytime I came across any situation that may be perceived as negative from the outside, I could find the, the positive in it. And so after doing this for a, well, a years at this point, I, I, I you know, sometimes it doesn't, uh, you know, sometimes I still mess up and I, I might go uh, to, to the negative at, at first, but 
I'm able to, you know, reshift and point my brain a different direction. One story I like to tell is uh, when we were on vacation, we were actually heading back home. We got to the airport. And, you know, we were supposed to fly back home and I, it was me and my wife and our three kids. We're kind of exhausted at this point because we've been in Florida for uh, a week now. We just want to get home and relax and chill. And so we got to the airport. We're like, all right, we're going to be home today. And something messed up with our flight. We weren't getting home today. They, were, they had no way to get us there. They wanted us to rent a car and, um, you know, drive back home or, you know, stay the night and, you know, we can make, we can get a flight tomorrow. And I remember the, the first thought in my head was, oh, sweet. Maybe we can get something good out of this. Like maybe we'll get free tickets or something because they kind of screwed us up with this, you know, whole uh, plane ticket debacle. Mm -hmm. And it's just simple things like that, that doing this gratitude and keeping this attitude of gratitude helps me with those little, these little challenges that I come across in my life to see them as opportunities instead of challenges. So I think that's been like the biggest thing for me. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. And you're, you're basically summarizing um, many of the things that um, I've been talking a lot about on uh, a lot on, um, on the podcast and my guests as well. The fact that by building this this habit, it shows up when when you need it, basically, and in in many moments in our life, when uh, there are situations like these, when you when you're surprised by by something uh, which most people would perceive as being negative at first, um, you manage to find something good and uh you manage to be more resilient so yeah i think this this is amazing and uh i'm i'm really happy that that you were able to take on this habit and to to have these kinds of results and to to experience this i think it's it's really wonderful to to hear something like this and um yeah i'm, I'm guessing you were tired i'm guessing that you wanted to get home as well, but you managed to to have a a different uh, perception on the situation, and I think that's that's wonderful. And actually, this uh, anticipated my uh, what would have been my my next question. I was curious if you had a moment, maybe it was this one or uh, maybe another one, when you uh realized when you experienced gratitude um more fully like as a really personal experience not just um trying to do it and mentally uh, rehearsing it but actually realizing oh my god i'm so grateful or something like this yeah, I'd say, I mean, the airport one was definitely one of them, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there's several different moments in my life that this has happened. Um, I can't think of another one on on the spot, but I, I will say that kind of, kind of how I see gratitude and, you know, uh, coming, coming across uh, different situations or events in your life. Like there, you have you have one or two ways to really choose to look at it. You can choose to be like excited and grateful for it, or you can choose to be you know upset and you know not looking forward to it. I, I think this is something that I really take into account with like as I grow older. I'm 28 years old, so I'm getting close to becoming 30. I know for like a lot of the people around me, especially my age. Um, you know, some of my friends and stuff, they're like dreading 30 and, you know, oh man, I'm getting so old. And I've, I've just always told myself, I will never do that. I will never like complain about my age. Uh, I just, I'm not going to do that. What's the point in that? I'd rather just have an attitude of gratitude about it and be like, you know what? Well, first of all, like, thank God I'm alive. Like I'm here, I'm <laughs> living as a human being. And two, like, why, why, why would I choose to be negative and, you know, 
uh, grumpy about turning 30. Like, why? I don't feel better uh, thinking and, you know, being ungrateful for it. I know I feel better if I am excited about it and I'm grateful for it. I mean, I I am. I'm excited to turn 30. It's two years from now. Like, what's my life going to be like in two years? You know, I only get better every single day, you know, every single year. That's what I strive to do my, my entire life is I just try to get better every single day. So two years of getting better every single day, where am I going to be at at 30? Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going to be at, but I know I'm going to be grateful for it. And I'm just, yeah, I, I just see it as something that you should think of uh, seeing as like, like as a choice instead of, oh man, I, I, I'm about to turn 30 or, oh man, I, I have to go to work. Like, no, you, like you get to go to work. You get to turn 30. Like you should be grateful to go to work. I mean, even if you don't like your job, um, find ways to be grateful for it. And, you know, and if, you know, if you don't like your job and you want to get out of it, then yeah, you can take steps to get out of it. But while you're in that process of in that job or whatever situation that you're in, make the most of it, man. Don't live in an ungrateful mindset and make yourself feel even worse. Like that doesn't help you at all. At least find ways, even the smallest of things, even if there's like a hundred negative things in whatever situation that when you're in, if you can find that one positive thing and just put your focus on it and just say, you know what, I'm grateful for this thing right here and just solely focus on that. And you'll just feel so much better. I mean, that's what we all want to feel, right? We all want to feel good about ourselves. We all want to feel happy. So let's do it. Let's focus on the good in our lives instead of focusing on all all the negative. And it's still okay to like try and build more good in our lives while, you know, that's happening. But if we're in a situation where there isn't a whole lot, let's focus on the not a whole lot. Like let's focus on that little bit and start to feel better and more grateful. And I think that's I think that's what gratitude does for us. And I think it's, I think honestly, gratitude is probably one of the most underrated mental health tools out there. I mean, by far, it sounds like a cheesy thing. And I I feel like sometimes when I talk about it to people, especially with social anxiety, it's like "Ah, gratitude, like, you know, you you think of like grade school, like, you know, saying what you're grateful for, like Thanksgiving or whatever. It's just kind of like a cheesy thing. Like, No, dude, it seriously has mindset, you know, effects in your brain. They've done science on it and it it does wonders for you. So, yeah. Man, I love your passion and um, I love so many of the things that you that you shared. I think they're right on point. And um, yeah, I think it's it's getting back a little bit to the age. Um, I think this works great for all ages so for our listeners even if you're not turning 30 you're turning 40 or 50 it's it's the same kind of attitude some choose to have a negative attitude and to think of all of the bad things that are are coming with getting older but some like Kyle here is able to be excited knowing that he's going to be better and he's going to grow and i I just love this perspective because it it just works in in so many situations and uh when we when we're thinking about the future and we're talking with negative people about the future isn't it making you (laughs) feel much better uh when when you hear what kyle had to say about this perspective like can't you feel his excitement about the future? I think this is a really wonderful example of uh, embracing uh, our age and uh, the fact that we are getting older and that we are we're growing in a really, really beautiful way. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Gratitude often comes from asking for help and receiving it. Our struggles are easier to overcome when we get some help and so we get to experience more gratitude as well. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is, therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help, 
or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and the Gratitude Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Georgian. That's betterhelp.com slash Georgian. Just this, this whole perspective on, on how gratitude can help us is, is so profound and I love how, how you explain it and how passionate you are about it. And I'm wondering if you would like to, to share what you're, you're telling people with social anxiety about gratitude. Like how can people with social anxiety apply gratitude to make their life better? Yeah, so, I mean, I think a lot that has to do with, you know, I don't want to say fighting or social anxiety, but kind of listening, talking, taking back control from your social anxiety has to do with your mindset. I think if you view it as a negative thing, it doesn't help you at all. Uh, a common thing that I see and that you've probably heard people say as well is, you know, I, I can't stand my anxiety or, you know, people may even say like, Oh, go away. Like, why are you here? I don't, I don't want to feel you. And, uh, and really we should be, we should be grateful for our anxiety. I know it sounds maybe kind of weird, but our anxiety is actually there to protect us. It's really just a component of our brain to help us. That's, when it pops up, that's what your brain thinks it's doing for you. It's producing that anxiety to try and help you, to try and protect you. It feels that you are in danger. So it is throwing off anxiety saying, hey, get out of there, man. Get out. You're in danger. Get out. That's why it's producing that anxiety. So if you think back to like the you know caveman days uh, aspect of it, um, you know, they come across a a lion in the jungle, like, boom, they start producing anxiety, right? And that's good anxiety. They need to have that because that tells them, run, get out of there. If you didn't have anxiety in that moment, you would be, you know, just sitting there like, oh, what a cool lion. But no, you need that anxiety. So um, (laughs) yeah, we need to be grateful for it. And I think that's something that gets overlooked is we need to be grateful for our anxiety that we have. And so instead of, you know, telling your anxiety to stop or go away, like talk to it and talk to it like a person. You can even name your anxiety. For me, you know, I name my anxiety, you know, something with a a name that makes me laugh. And so (laughs) I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say, hey, Lloyd, whatever reason, no offense to anybody named Lloyd, just makes me laugh every time. It's uh, kind of an uh, inside joke between my me and my friends not worth explaining but anyways <laughs> like hey Lloyd you know like I'm really I'm really grateful for you showing up right now like thank you so much like I know what you're trying to do you're trying to protect me I really appreciate that right now but I promise you I am safe I, I am here I, I don't need protection so seriously you you go take a break like go chill for a minute on the couch I got this I'm safe you know if I need you though I'll, I'll let you know And then you can come, you know, give me some protection. But right at this moment, I don't need it right now. But thank you very much. And I think that's something that is so powerful to do. And if you're listening to me and you think, no, no way that works. Like, that sounds so weird. Do it. Do it. Try it one time. You tell me if it doesn't work. I'm telling you, it works very well, especially when you come in those moments where, like, you feel anxious about something that, you know, you don't excuse me, that you don't really need to feel anxious about, you know, it's, it's normal to be anxious when you come across a lion in the wild. Right. But we're not in danger. If, you know, you feel anxious about, you know, raising your hand in class 
or if you feel anxious about, um, you know, giving a speech in, in front of some people, like you're not in danger in those moments. You don't need anxiety. It's trying to protect you from a danger that's a, a false, falsely perceived danger. It's, you're not really in danger. So talk to it. Be grateful for it. Say thank you and say, hey, you can go chill. I got this. I'm safe. Exactly. Exactly. And um, I just remembered uh, the acronym for fear or one of them, uh, false evidence appearing real. real. Exactly. So uh, things that might happen uh, that we think are evidence that seem to be real somehow, but they're actually not. And uh, yeah, I, I love this this exercise and I love how much gratitude is incorporated in it and um i think it's it's also like you, like you mentioned it's it also has a really uh, big part of acceptance and um not fighting it but actually accepting it um realizing it's part of uh you somehow and it's or it's it's something um else that's somehow inside of you uh, that you can name and that's not you and uh, you can move forward and I, I really love that and um, I was actually thinking of many of our listeners might have um, kids with social anxiety and I was thinking whether or not you have uh, maybe some tips for parents that have kids with social anxiety like is there something they can do to to help them yeah absolutely so i think uh, whether you have kids that have social anxiety or uh, kids you know that don't i think one really important thing to do as a parent is to be, be proactive with your child's mental health. Don't wait until you start to realize if, you know, if and when they have anxiety, you know, start practicing the tools with them now. Start doing gratitude, gratitude lists with them in the morning and at night, you know, meditate with them in the morning and night. And when they start to, you know, come across um, as focusing on, on that negative, which all our brains are trained to do. We are trained mm -hmm. to go straight to the negative, you know, and sometimes a lot of times kids will get, will get stuck on it and they'll get in that loop. My kids do it all the time. And I'll say, okay, I feel like you're focusing a lot on the negative right now. Can you tell me three things you're grateful for? And it's, it's funny because a lot of, most of the time it, it'll bring them out of that little negative spurt and it'll totally change their whole mindset and mood you know within about you know five minutes um you know from doing the little gratitude but I, i'd say the the biggest thing with kids with social anxiety is i mean unfortunately is not really a whole lot like action that you can do to help them to you know take back control i think the biggest thing is to listen to them just be there for them don't give advice don't try to tell them what to do unless they ask for it but i think the biggest thing and i think the biggest thing that parents mess up on a lot for social anxiety is just listen just be there as a support you know and if if you'd like to help them and you're not sure how ask them say hey how can i support you with this how can i help you you know if if you do need my support you, you know i'm here like i can help you and when they're when they're down to talk listen just listen when they're when they're talking just listen the whole time i'm really emphasizing that and i i, I know for me personally like because I'm a guy and I'm just like a fixer. And I just want to like fix yeah. people sometimes when I hear them talking like uh, about whatever they're going through. And I'm just, you know, my instinct is just to be like, oh, well, you should do this. Um, that's why I'm really emphasizing on listening because that that's not helpful um, as you may think. Um, so really just listening and just being a, a support. I think that's really the biggest thing that you can do. Because like I said, when I was in uh, high school and I had that moment where I was 
you know, in, in the bathroom stall crying and I didn't know what to do. And I, and I reached out, you know, I talked to my parents. That was the, that was the best gift they gave to me. It was, they just, they just listened to me and they allowed me to just unleash that burden from which I was holding in for so long. And they allowed me to just, you know, uh, unleash it and give it to them. And it, it's so, it's such a relief for someone to be able to, you know, tell somebody else, whoever it is, what's going on inside them, inside their head, so they can, you know, get that out and get some relief. So yeah, that would be my my number one thing for parents with kids with social anxiety, for sure. I love it. I love it. It's It's so practical and it makes so much sense. Like when when you're going through something like this, you want to be heard, you want to be um, supported, acknowledged. And yeah, since um, adults have so much experience, <laughs> the, there most probably is this tendency to, to just offer all of their experience and uh, let, let them know what they need to do. Um, but actually what matter mo- matters most like, like like you shared as well is listening and yeah i think this is this is really really good and really powerful so yeah i i really love the idea thank you so much for for sharing that with us and um i'm i'm curious of some of the things that you that you're grateful for that that you write in in your gratitude journal like if you have some some things that you want to share um just to give some ideas uh, to our listeners like what could they be grateful for yeah so uh, i think one big thing about writing down what you're grateful for and something i learned over the past couple of years was to write stuff that you're grateful for that's happened in the past 24 hours. This eliminates you getting stale on saying, I'm grateful for my house. I'm grateful for my family. Like we're all grateful for those things and that's good. And we, yeah, we need to, you know, acknowledge that we're grateful for it, but it becomes kind of stale when we kind of go over the same things over and over. What's grateful for What's grateful for what are you grateful for that's happening like right now? Like what has happened recently that you're grateful for? What's, what's good going on in your life right now? Not something that is a, a constant in your life. And it, it can be challenging sometimes, um, but that's good because that means that you're really thinking of like the present moment. And I think that helps develop a much stronger attitude of gratitude for the day every single morning. So you know, that, that's, that's like my biggest tip, but I'd say, I guess I'm trying to think of some of the stuff I wrote this morning. Um, uh, One thing is I I have to, I have to, I get to drive down about 80 miles South every, or every other Wednesday. Uh, If I'm being honest, I, I would choose not to do that. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not, particularly fond of it i'd much rather just stay locally instead of going down there every other wednesday but what good does that do for me to focus on saying i i hate having to go down to to a city called litchfield it's like i hate having to go down there instead i'm like "Uh, it's an hour and a half drive that's an hour and a half to myself all by myself that's an hour and a half i can listen to podcasts i can listen to music you know i if I'm, these are things that I enjoy. So I'm just going to focus on that aspect of it. And so that's what I, and you know, me being with three kids an hour and a half by myself is, is great. So that's what I'm going to focus on. You know, like I said, I'm not trying to fool myself. I'd much rather stay here. I'd much rather just be here. But every other Wednesday at this moment in my life, I have to, I get to uh, drive down an hour and a half. And so that's something that I'm grateful for every Wednesday. And every Wednesday, I write that down in there. It's like, I'm grateful or every other Wednesday. I, I'm grateful I get to go to Litchfield so I can listen to podcasts and music and just chill and be by myself instead of just focusing on, oh, I got to go to Litchfield. I really don't want to I have to drive an hour and a half and then an hour and a half back. That's three hours of my life just driving. So I think that's that's uh 
Uh, yeah, that's one of that's one of the biggest things. And me kind of just another example of, you know, just reframing um, or not even really reframing, but really just focusing on the maybe even just the small positive as opposed to the, you know, several negatives. So um, kinda, uh, that's what I would challenge your listeners to do. You know, if there's something today that you're not wanting to do or you know, you feeling like you have to do it, but you know, you don't really want to oh, well, first find ways you can be grateful for it. And then second, change your language around it. As, as I just told you, and I messed up twice in a row, <laughs> I said, I have to go. And then I said, Oh wait, I get to go to Litchfield. Don't you don't use the word have uh, that makes that's like train your mind just to be negative about it. And it's just like, Oh, I, when you have to do something, that's something you don't want to do. But when you get to do something, that's something you do want to do. So start start using that language instead. When you find yourself saying, I have, like, oh, okay, I got it. I get to go. I think that's a, a really good tip and another, like, attitude of gratitude mindset trick. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love your answer. And I think it's, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and just the fact that you also incorporated this part of being honest okay um it's not something that i particularly like but i choose to to be grateful for the good parts in in that experience and to focus more on them and there are so many situations in our life when we we get to do some things that we don't particularly want or like um but that we can't change at least not at this moment. So we we have the choice to to be negative and to think about all of the negative things that um, are related to the, that situation, or we can have your attitude and to to think about all of the things that are great about um, that experience and um, find ways of um, cultivating more gratitude. I I love it, and I think it's. It's a great example because many of our listeners, I'm sure, uh, have these kinds of uh, um, road trips that they need to take. Um, And yeah, having a different kind of attitude makes a really big difference because it's three hours of our life, right? For um, I don't know how many years. And we can be negative in those those three hours or we can um, enjoy them as much as possible. So, yeah, I, I think it's such a great example and I'm really happy that you, that you shared it with us. Mm, we're nearing the end of our time together and I wanted to ask you, uh, firstly, who are some of the people in your life that you're grateful for? And afterwards, where can our audience find you online? How they can get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some of the people I'm grateful for, um, you know, obviously I'm grateful for my kids. They're my motivators, my drivers for what I do. Um, really, really extremely grateful for my extremely strong support system I have. My wife who uh, helps me a lot, just being able to do all this stuff. I'm grateful for her helping me with the kids this morning and taking them, you know, to the bus stop so I could come and be on this podcast this morning. Um, She is awesome. Like she is my rock. She supports me, you know, uh, doing all this stuff. Even when I was just started out, I just had an idea like, Hey, I want to help people with this. Um, you know, she supported it from the very beginning. So I am just extremely grateful for her and that. Um, also extremely grateful for my parents. Always been a, a support system my entire life. Like I told the story early, you know, they've always supported me. They've listened to me. They didn't invalidate my feelings, um, which I know can be, you know, some people don't have that uh, a luxury of parents like that. They, you know, their parents aren't um how you say uh, i guess uh, as well versed in, in mental health and how, how to approach that and you know i i had parents growing up 
uh, like that. So I'm extremely grateful for that. So I, I would say that that is definitely, <clears throat> I'm just extremely grateful for my support system and, and doing all this stuff. Um, as far as where you can find me, you can find me um, on Instagram is where I mostly hang out, Social Anxiety Kyle. Um, also, uh, slightly new to TikTok, but I've been putting some work in on there. Uh, Social Anxiety Kyle, pretty much anywhere, Social Anxiety Kyle. Guess what? My website, socialanxietykyle.com. So that's where you can find me. <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. That's uh, very easy to remember. And um, yeah, you can search for uh, Social Anxiety Kyle everywhere online and you will find uh, him on the platform that you like most and uh, you'll be able to get in touch with him. So, Kyle, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for, for all of the things that you've shared with us. I really love your passion and um, yeah, I wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, extremely grateful to be on the Gratitude Podcast. <laughs>